you. So thank you, organizers, for bringing such a diverse group of people, such a good location. So it's very useful and fruitful. And it also thank you, uh, Debashish, for giving good introduction to my talk. So I have, I can actually can explain less. So uh, I will be talking about uh, collective dynamics of uh, interacting molecular motors. Uh, and we know in this audience there are experts on motor proteins. So motor proteins are enzymes that convert the chemical energy into mechanical work. You know, you know that they're very important. They have a lot of important functions. And some of them uh, was mentioned, Debashish and some many, many other people. I just wanted to show you this movie, which people have seen and many people already showed this movie. Uh, in order to ask graduate students, what is wrong with this movie? Good. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> yeah. So, so what is wrong with this movie? Tell me, graduate students. Okay. So let's forget about it for a moment. So, what is wrong with this movie is so the re re the connection of this movie to real biological processes is the same as the connection of Bollywood movies to real life. Okay, no connection. And the reason is, my motor proteins will really be much more noisy, stochastic, will be much more stuff. So the reason I'm saying is, when we do a model, it's a cartoon. It's a cartoon, that was a much better successful cartoon, I'm not as good to prepare this cartoon, but it's a cartoon which we hope that we capture some important, some things that we want to explain, but many other things we do not, we don't understand. So we should remember this, our theoretical models is a cartoons, better or worse, but cartoons. So don't try to oversell them, and remember there is a limitation. So remembering this, so let me continue. Um, um, Stuck. For a moment. Okay. So, okay, good. So we know a lot about motor proteins, and this picture also was shown. So we know that these motor proteins are multidimensional proteins. They have, for example, they have uh, motor head domains where ATP hydrolysis is taking place. They have coil-coil regions. They have these domains which are responsible to binding to cellular cargos. And the structures is uh, different, but dynamics is even more complicated. We know we know the structure of the motor proteins. We also know that motor proteins. I hope you remember it's enzyme. It means it's a biological catalyst molecule. So it accelerates some reaction, but it's not consumed. So, from the point of view of chemistry, if you have motor proteins sitting in some position X, it, for example, uh, ATP binds, ATP hydrolyzes, products are released. And you come back to exactly the same state, motor protein chemically identical over there. The only difference is that it's moved some distance because somehow it was able to convert part of this energy released during the chemical reaction into its own mechanical motion. Um, we also we know a lot about motor proteins. It's non-equilibrium systems, right? Remember, equilibrium in biology is when you're dead. That's equilibrium. We're not interested in this yet. Um, they move with very different velocities. Uh, velocities range essentially five orders, four, four or five orders of magnitude. They have different step sizes. The smaller step size corresponds to motor which moves on nucleic acids. The one that uh, Debashis was mentioning that there are bigger motors, might in five make steps close to 36 nanometers. They can exert different forces. Um, if you think about them as a tiny machines, tiny cars, they need some fuel, and the fuel comes from a hydrolysis of ATP or polymerization of DNA or RNA or protein synthesis. Um, so they, what is amazing about motor proteins, from my point of view, they, they're amazingly efficient. By efficiency, I mean the work done over energy provided. Energy is ATP hydrolysis. They're very, very efficient here. Uh, you know that if we compare it with the car, do you know what is the most efficient gasoline car engine? So essentially, if you look even at kinesin, depending on, on reports, efficiency of kinesin conventional ranges between 50 up to 80. If you look at myosin 5, efficiency close to 90%. So they're very efficient, most of them, not all of them. So what is the most, okay, let me ask you a simpler question. From what country comes the most efficient gasoline engine? Japan. It's actually Honda Accord. Okay, Honda Accord has a 10% only. So look. These objects are much more efficient than the best uh, Japanese uh, engineering can produce in many, many years. So if we would know this a little bit, how nature does it, we would be probably rich. Anyway, 
So we know a lot about motor proteins, and the reason we know a lot due to this revolution which happened in the last 15, 20 years, it's a single molecule revolution. There is a, with advantage uh, of, uh, there is a discovery of all these new methods, single molecule, people were able to actually see them, uh, see in the quotes, because exactly you don't see the motor, you see, for example, in optical trap, you see the bead, but the, but the motor is connected to the bead. There's optical trap methods, there is this thread, which uh, Professor Puglisi talked last time, essentially it's a thread that he was able to see all these changes because of, uh, he, no, he knew where he put all these dyes here. Um, we, we know a lot also because we can actually uh, have this better resolution methods. Uh, we can also look at the rotation of, the, of, this ob of these motors using this magnetic tweezer spectroscopy. So more or less we know a lot about single molecules separately. We know a lot. Um, but the problem is that in, in real biological systems, in, uh, we, our goal, we want to understand biological systems, they work collectively. So this is a nice, actually, picture because it's a combination of real experimental observation with some uh, drawings that um, artists added. But this is a really good way of emphasizing. So this is some cellular cargo, some vesicle, which is moved on microtubule. But look next to it, there is some actin here. And then the, so you can actually draw, this is a dynein. This is probably kinesin. This is myosin. So it shows you that it's a complex behavior. It's a collective behavior. And that's what we need to understand. Motor proteins typically work in groups. But the problem is, even if we think that we understand single molecules more or less, collective behavior is much more difficult because it's not one plus one is not equal to here. It's not additive. It's much more complex here. And um, there are many issues about collective motion of motor proteins here. For example, we still don't fully understand do they cooperate, do they like each other, do they don't like each other, what is this mechanism of this? Many, many questions here, and there are experts in the audience here. I will concentrate on these only questions, how these interactions affect the dynamics, and I will also warn you, I will do it in a primitive way. In a, I know it's in a primitive way, but remember my things, my um, picture about this model, it's a cartoon. I know it's primitive, but I hope I captured something with this. Okay, um, there is a many experiments when people actually can really test this collective behavior of motor proteins. I will mention only a few of them. So for example, you can do experiments so-called uh, motility assay or microtubule gliding. The way you do it, you have a glass, on a glass, you chemically uh, bind, for example, kinesins, and then you put microtubule, which is fluorescently labeled on the top. So essentially, imagine that I am kinesin, and I can do like this, uh, move uh, microtubule, and I can see this in experiments. So this is one way of doing things. You can change the concentrate, the density of motor proteins. You can, you can do a lot of things here. Another type of experiments, uh, when you essentially create uh, these assemblies, for example, my collaborator, Rice Michael Deal, he, he had a, he connected two kinesins through some uh, clever biochemistry tricks to piece of DNA of, of size 50 nanometers here, which is essentially persistent length, and then he connected, uh, he could, in this case, quantum dot, but he actually connected to optical uh, bead, and then you could see how this bead moves, and that essentially uh, shows the behavior of two motors because the motors are connected to each other. So there, is a, there are experimental ways of actually testing some collective behavior here. And um, so, so let me tell you something. Uh, some, some of the experimental results, not, not the ones that I mentioned, but some experimental results about these interactions here. So uh, these people did experiments on uh, ATP, but there was no, no AT, there was no ATP on kinesin without ATP, and they looked at the binding of ki uh, kinesin to microtubules. This microtubule is fluorescently labeled kinesins here, and they saw that the density profiles look very, very non-uniform. And what they argued is if there is no interaction between motor proteins, what, what I mean interactions, you understand there is exclusion, of course, right? Because you cannot sit in the same place. If there is no additional interaction between them, you would expect to have more or less uniform density, but the density here was very non-uniform. So then they argued that it's probably a weak uh, short-range attraction. And they even calculated, estimated this weak attraction here. And um, a different set of experiments actually argued that, yes, interaction is here, but it's probably repulsion not attraction, because in these experiments, they put a, a stage blocks which were made from other kinesins, mutated kinesins, and they saw that kinesins were coming to this block, which is another kinesin, didn't like to be there, and wanted to dissociate. So they argued uh, that actually probably weak repulsion. So people still don't understand what is this sign of these interactions, but they know there is interactions, that there is additional short-range interactions. And if, if you can ask what is the nature of these interactions, 
It could be several uh, re several origins. It could be chemical. So these molecules are bulky. There is a group sitting next to each other. You can have van der Waals or some chemical interaction. Polar group can attract or, or repel each other. You can also have some effective interaction. By effective interaction, I mean the following. So imagine this is my motor. For simplicity, two-headed motor as, as, as one object. If, if it binds to microtubule, it changes something in microtubule locally in microtubule. If they're far away from each other, these changes are uh, far away from each other. But if you bring them together, these changes in microtubule, there is some overlap zone, which means you have to change less, which will be effectively like an interaction. Some other kind of interaction could be attraction, could be repulsion. Here. Okay, whatever the source of this effective interaction, we want to understand the role of this interaction in dynamics of molecular motors. Okay, so eventually, as I said, we want to understand the transport in cells. And the first, if you look at cells, you understand it's a very complex... Oh, yes. It's, it's uh, two motors. Sit, when they sit next to each other, there is some kind of effective interaction between them. I don't know the source of it. Yes, on a microtubule. On microtubule. When they sit on microtubule next to each other, there is some kind of effective interaction. Well, you know, kinesin, for example, when it's not a microtubule, is a, uh, essentially uh, the, the tail goes to the head and it's not active anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what essentially. You're right, but could be could be related. It could be related again. I yes. Possible, but that's let's say let's do it before this happened. It's possible that it's also the reason. Heterogeneity is another big issue which Steve will address. So so these experiments were reproducible. So they do see uh, this is. Yes, that's, that's exactly. These people did this experiment. They actually was reproducible many times, at least these people. And the same with over there. It was enough statistics to, to, to trust them. I mean, there are many, maybe any, many other issues. But I think there are interactions. I don't know exactly the sign or strength, but probably it's there. Uh -huh. Yes, we know this, more or less. Uh, pretty strong, reasonably strong. That's why they are very processive because they can move. So, uh, yeah, reasonably strong. So, most probably it's a weak interaction, but we don't know attraction or repulsion. Um, okay. So, uh, so as I said, we want to understand the traffic. We want to understand the behavior in cells, uh, in real cells. And at the beginning, transport in cells. At the beginning, it seems complicated. Like, look at this uh, famous picture. Uh, it's it's a mess, right? It's a network. It's a complex things here. But then, if you think a little bit, you understand that uh, you can actually simplify things here because there is essentially directionality in transport. There is microtubules, as we heard this morning, and uh, usually they go from some uh, central nucleus areas and, and the plus end of microtubules in the directions of peri periphery. So when if kinase, they move mostly in one direction. In other words, you you can um, you can very reasonably describe the transport of motor protein cytoskeleton as effective one-dimensional process. And essentially, that was also the argument that Debashish was making. And, and, and this is the case. You, you go to these uh, models, which are very popular, come, come out uh, popular. It's asymmetric simple exclusion processes because they turned out to be very successful in explaining many phenomena. And you just saw example of how it was successful in explaining uh, some of this uh, unusual transcription and uh, replication things that Debashish was saying. It's exactly like this asymmetric simple exclusion processes. So, so we can do, yeah, yes. Right, of course, excellent question. For simplicity, we know that many of the kinases move only in one protofilament. So this partially answers the question. But even if they are switching protofilaments, it's still effectively quasi 1D path. So let's, so it's a reasonable thing. Again, remember what I told you, I'm, I'm showing this not as a good movie, but it's a cartoon. I know it's far away from real life, but I hope I capture some of the things which are important. Okay, that's why I show this movie and explain the things. Yeah. It's a cartoon. 
I, I definitely miss something. Okay, good. So we have this asymmetric simple exclusion models, which uh, Debashis explains them. They're non-equilibrium, essentially. It's, it's a lattice of sites, particles coming for some rate A, alpha. They move for some rate 1 if there is available site. They leave with rate beta and exclusion, they call exclusion because there is no motion from this particle to this one because there is something sitting in front. Very simple model. Um, and for physicists, this is like Ising model for non equilibrium system. Extremely popular, simple, and very powerful in many senses. So uh, you can produce a dynamic phase diagram. It's a boundary induced phase diagram, which Debashis already was showing here. If your dynamics is limited by entrance, you have low density phase. If your dynamics is limited by exit, you have high density phase, which we can see frequently on the roads. You go to Bangalore or Delhi or Mumbai, there's a traffic here. And this is an ideal situation when dynamics is limited by what is going on inside of your system by bulk. And that probably leads to maximal current phase. But uh, there are experts in the audience, so I probably don't have to uh, explain it in details. Now, so what I'm trying to explain here is that there is interactions and there are these models which are was reasonably good uh, to explain things. So I want to bring interaction with this model. So I want to add one ingredient. Yes. Right. Now, yes, that's correct. But again, it's a, as I said, I, we assume that it's come start here and more or less doesn't dissuade until some end, which for my for kinesins is a reasonable assumption. Right, and I will explain that more. We in a second, I will explain that I I, I have find this more realistic situation too, uh, but for now I have the simplest possible situation. I want to do the simplest possible model. Okay, so this is a model. We have essentially a symmetric simple occlusion model. Particle can move inside if there is a. Um, but we we actually say the rate is one if you move and there is nothing happen. But rate here is Q. If you are creating one short range. Uh, a uh, bond that the rate is different, or if you break one, like here you break and the rate is R here. So essentially, some of the rates which were the same before, now different because you are making the bonds, short range bonds, or breaking them. And uh, no, so far the simplest things, it's not sound specific. The only thing is that there is Q and R is not equal to one. Now, people actually looked at this interaction in this uh, context of symmetric exclusion. The difference that I am saying is, you want to show that you're different from other people, we're doing this so-called thermodynamically consistent way. And let me explain what it means thermodynamically consistent. I'm treating this as a, in a chemical way. So I'm treating when two particles side to, uh, next to each other, but next nearest neighbors, there is no energy. And when they bring together, there is some energy. And then essentially this, transition of making the bond or breaking the bond, I look at it as a chemical reaction, and there is a rate of breaking is R, rate of making is Q, and when, there is no, when energy of interaction is zero, rate is one, and I recover classical total asymmetric system. So it is a generalization of totally symmetric with interactions, but interactions are taken here in thermodynamic way, because we can use some detailed balance argument to say what is the ratio of this rate. We can say that the ratio of these rates of making bond over breaking bond is like typical equilibrium constant in chemistry. So it's exponent of the interaction energy. Very simple arguments here. And then we can even, even write explicit expressions for the rates. Uh, we can write explicit expressions for the rates here. And again, in our notations, attraction is a positive energy, repulsion is a negative. So this situation, for example, corresponds to repulsion. So when I bring two motors together, they don't like it. It's a repulsion. If this barrier would be lower, it would be attraction here. So just want to, to understand uh, language and notations a little bit. Okay, so, so I, I use this detailed balance argument to say what is the ratio of these rates, but to understand dynamics, I need to know explicit values for these rates. And I use, uh, I don't know exactly how this interaction is distributed between uh, breaking bond or making bond. So I introduce parameter theta, which ranges between zero and one, and that's how I send the rate Q or rate R. So, so essentially, uh, this is my rate Q, this is my rate R. Let me explain to it if you not with mathematics here. The physical meaning of this statement is very simple. For attraction, when energy is posi uh, positive, this means that I like to go faster to make the bond. If there is attraction, I move faster to make the bond. If there is a repulsion, I move slower to make the bond, but I move faster to break the bond. So that's the physical meaning of this. So if there is a repulsion, so it's faster to break the bond, the cluster, and it's slower to make the bond. So this is very simple physical meaning uh, for these expressions here. Okay, um, so 
Now you want to solve this model, and of course, this is before solving, I want to remind this citation, which actually goes to Einstein. We want to do as simple as possible, but sometimes too simple is bad. And that's an example when too simple is actually bad, because the way we started to look at this problem, we did exactly what Debashek did with his, he has a simple mean field model. Simple mean field model has a very simple meaning. So you essentially, you're saying that a probability of occupation of two neighboring sites independent from each other. The simplest possible model, which was so successful in a symmetric exclusion process, it was so successful with what Debashek is showing using this very simple model, and it doesn't work here completely. So if you do all the calculation, you, you actually, uh, for, for example, if you do the calculations, uh, you get this expression, for example, for current and maximal current phase. Why I'm saying this is nonsense? Because, which is also a, a lesson for students, when you get your answer, check your limits and you see if they're reasonable or not. Um, probably it's more important for American students, but anyway. Uh, so if you look at these things, for example, let's take it to maximal repulsion. This formula predicts infinite current. Okay, that's nonsense. Okay, maybe I will be some more diluted density, but I will move. There will be finite current, not infinite. Or if I go to an infinite attraction, when E is positive, it will be again infinite current. But you understand if two particles stuck together, they will never be unbreak. The current will be zero. So this model is absolutely wrong here. The simple mean field, which is so successful in other things, is absolutely wrong. That was the fr was first surprise for us. We thought we would be successful. It absolutely didn't work. So, of course, well, if it doesn't work, you do something better, and you understand that there is a, it seem, the simple mean field model doesn't work, which means there is a correlations which are more important, and you have to take this into account. And the way to do it, you do so-called cluster mean field. Essentially, in a simple language, you treat dynamics inside of the cluster, in this case, two sides, exactly, but you disregard um, correlations between, uh, between uh, segments of larger sites. So, in other words, you, you saying that, Yes, we treat the class inside of the cluster everything exactly, but, but the probability of having two segments of size four, for example, is independent of what's happening in the segment of this segment and this segment. So it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable way of doing these things here. Okay, so Debashish was showing his formulas to show how complicated mathematics you have. I just show this formula usually to scare students away and to show that it's really not the way to proceed. And the reason it's not really well to proceed, also this method is better, I can have some qualitative agreement with simulations here. The reason it's not very good is because related to, to your questions of these things, because I want eventually to do more realistic things here, you know. I, I'm like company Apple, I want you to buy iPhone, iPad, iMac for all your life and all this. So, so I want to do more things here. And if I do this, clearly more realistic features will not be able, right? I, it will be completely a mess, right, uh, to, do, to solve them numerically. Simulations is useful, but without good theory, simulations is a waste of time, as we know. So, uh, so this is not good. Uh, and by the way, let's, let's look a little bit on, on, simul on, on, the, on the results before I proceed. So this is a simulation, this is a current and maximal current phase here. Um, and if I believe some uh, uh, arguments about Attractions that this is a probably experimental range probably for kinesins here. This is our simulations here. And the first, second surprise that we had was that the sign of interactions is not, so the, the dynamics is not the same for negative and for positive uh, interactions here, which was surprising to me because the way I put it, I put interactions very symmetrically. This is thermodynamic consistent argument. This is for equal spreading between forward and backward trades here. But apparently, Repulsions, dynamic in repulsions goes to some uh, limit, to some finite limit. And for attractions, I go to zero as I expected, but it's, they're not symmetric here. Another interesting result here is, so this is no interaction. So the TASEP is over there. Classical TASEP is over there. But apparently, if I start to do more repulsion, I can increase the current up to 20%. That was something which is, was very strange to us. You do, you rep Particles repel, and, they, and the, there is more flux in your system. And it goes up to the small repulsion, up to 1 kT. So the green line is our uh, cluster mean field. This is, this is a simple mean field, which is clearly not physical here. Uh, but our cluster mean field is only qualitatively correct, despite the very big mathematical effort that we spent here. So we wanted to, yes. Essentially, uh, it's a maximal current phase, so it, de it, it depends. There is, a, there is some 
some, some non-trivial things which are later here. But it's a maximal current phase. But we can calculate all the density profiles. It's okay. So what I wanted to have, I wanted to have a simple theory which I can extend. Like, you remember, iPad, iPhone, I can sell it more. But I want to have it analytical, more or less, as much as I could. So at least something that I can extend it to more complicated things here. So we come out with this, uh, I call it modified cluster. It's not the one way to do it. There are many ways of doing this, but let me explain this way. So I understand that uh, the fluxes in the system depend on the occupancy of four sites because, because of the interaction. So I can have flux when particle can move from this in this configuration or in this configuration with rate R or in this configuration with rate Q because you're making bond or with rate one here because you make one bond but at the same time you, you break one bond but you make one bond so the rate is one. Here. So I can total flux from my system I can write as a sum of four terms corresponding to these four situations here. So let's consider this uh, current for this segment. So in this case I want to describe this current and the way to describe it is the following one. So the first term is gamma the gamma is essentially Boltzmann factor that the first site is empty. It's a ga gamma, it's, it's a Boltzmann factor because another possibility you might have a particle here with energy E. So that's a simple Boltzmann factor. The second term is probability that this middle segment is one zero. So the one that you can move. So, the, so you can move here. But the most important term probably is the last one. The last one is a term t tells me the possibility, the probability that this site is empty. But it's conditional probability under the condition that there is, in this case, there is only two possibilities can be in this system because I know that it should be occupied empty. This could be empty here or occupied like this. So essentially, it's a it's a it's a fraction of site. It's a relative probability to have this site empty, knowing that I can only have he, here zero zero or zero one. Okay. The way I think it's important because this way I put correlations in my system. This is a way to put correlations because if I know that if I calculate this relative things here, then I know uh, what was before. In other words, I put correlations. I put it in short range, but I put correlation this way. And again, I'm emphasizing this is not the only way to do it, and there is better ways of doing this, developed by Arvind Kumar Gupta, the student is present here from his group. Uh, Okay, so I can write these expressions, the, uh, the expressions, they, this P10, P00 probability of these clusters, which I can easily express in terms of the, of the density. And I have one additional approximation here for this uh, probability of to have cluster 10, like this 10, in terms of the rho. Rho is a density probability for given site to be occupied by the motor uh, protein. So essentially I have analytical formulas. I can extend it for all possible things to have a parallel channels as actually we did to have uh, many other things here. It's analytical theory. It works reasonably well, not perfectly, but reasonably well. All results are analytical and we actually go to the right uh, limits in, in limiting cases here. And for example, in the limit of maximal repulsion, our system is identical to totally symmetric system of dimers. You understand, but there's infinite repulsions. I cannot anything in front of me. So it's like motion of dimers. If motion of dimers was studied and our theory really reproduced it perfectly. So um, let me show you some of this phase, uh, uh, phase diagram. We can, although it's not perfect, our theory is uh, reasonable enough here. And uh, this, this is different phase diagram as a function of energy of interaction here. So here for repulsion and here for attraction, what you can see, something that you expect for attraction you for repulsion you mostly have low density dominates but if you go more to attraction they're more aged high density dominate because particles try, try to stick to each other so all of this is reasonable um, we can actually do better with the currents again this is a um, maximal uh, uh, maximal current uh, prediction for maximal current for different uh, splitting between forward and backward rates here and in some cases we're doing quite well as you can see but in most cases we were quite reasonable Especially you taking the fact that the model is very simple, essentially analytical, I can write it in, uh, in, in, in two minutes. Um, now, so, so if, if I look for a moment, um, so if I look for a moment at this and this and this and this graphs, I actually realize something that the theory that I, when, when I set up the theory, right, I didn't know about the sign of interaction, but then I look at the theory, it looks like the theory is much better for repulsion than for, attract, for, for attractions, right? I, I couldn't figure out where it comes from. Then I thought, 
maybe we should we should then look why it works better in some regimes than in other ones. Sometimes this kind of analysis helps a lot for understanding molecular picture. So we decided to look at correlations. So uh, we can define this function, which is essentially we call it correlation. This function has a very simple physical meaning. If there is no correlation, that would be zero. For any deviations from zero, it's a correlation. If it's negative, it's anti-correlation. If positive, it's positive correlation. And the physical meaning of this function is very simple. If I have particle at given site i, what is the probability that I will have particle next site to me or next next nearest neighbors after, and so on? So it's a, uh, and we can calculate it uh, in our theory. We can calculate these things here. And the, the one thing we immediately recover then in the case of no interactions, classical to set, there is no correlation, and that's the reason. Simple mean field works so well. That's the reason that everything Debashish told you is correct, because correlations cancel out somehow in, in this type of models here. But if you have nearest neighbors interactions, they don't. Uh, um, so, so in our case, if, we, if I look over, so this is our uh, simulations in the blue symbols, and the theory is a red line here. So what you can see that these uh, repulsions, there is anti-correlations, but relatively weak. Minus 0.1, and then when the sign of interaction changes, you go to stronger interaction and much stronger interaction. So, um, so in other words, uh, we we have a much stronger interaction for attraction and, and weak interaction for repulsion here. So this is a question that I asked, which was surprising for us. Why my theoretical approach, uh, takes in, uh, which takes into account some correlation, works better for repulsions than for attractions? So remember, the way I introduced it was completely symmetric. Uh, I didn't 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 assume anything about the interactions. Yes. This is an excellent question. I, I might explain you later. This is actually with a work with uh, Arvind Kumar Gupta, which there are some non-trivial things which I can explain uh, later here. Okay. It's, it, there are some interesting things here, but but I don't think it's important for biology probably. Okay. So. Um, and there, then if you think a little bit, you can understand where it, why it's happened. So let's look for repulsions. If I look for repulsions, suppose I have particle sitting in site I. If there is a repulsion with a much larger probability, I have nothing in the next particle, I plus one, right? Because it's repulsion. If this is the case, what's happened here, I don't really care. Because it can be a particle or no particle. There is no correlation of finding particle over there. This statement means that for repulsions, correlations are really short range. They essentially die after two sides, right? It's like imagine that you are in India, you're concerned what is going on in China, but you probably do not concern what is going on in Australia, right? Because it's too far away. That's what the analogy over here. So in correlations for repulsions are short range, and my theory captures this because I just put it cor correlation short range quite well. But for attraction situation is different. If I have particle here, with a larger probability, I have another particle here because it's attraction. It's, it's more energetically more favorable. If this is the case, then what's happened here, I would also probably will have particle over there, most probably. So as you can see here, this is a statement that correlations are much long range and much stronger for attractions, and they're shorter and much weaker for repulsions. So that's, that's what we are arguing here. Yes, yeah, yeah, so it's... So essentially, uh, I, this is probably partially the answer to you. When there is a strong correlation because of attraction, the current will actually go down. And the reason it will go down is because you will stuck in some clusters which you cannot unbreak. So it will eventually go down. But for repulsions, it's not the case. Because you will never make these clusters. You will reduce some density, but you will not uh, make these clusters. OK, good. So this is uh, this maximal current as a function of interaction of energy. If I change this theta, remember theta is a parameter which tells me splitting of uh, interaction energy between making the bond and breaking the bond. If the, in the language of the chemist, this is a position of transition state if I think there is a real chemical transition of making or breaking the bond in some sense here. And sure. Probably, yes. We are exploring these things, but it's not so uh, trivial, right? But let, let me tell you at the beginning. I started with a purely symmetric way. I didn't know all of this, right? I had a purely symmetric uh, rates, purely symmetric. So, so, but apparently this nature of interactions, the sign of interaction is important and changes dynamics. And partially our theory can capture this because of the way we constructed it after. I, I understood after that, that we did it good, only after, but before I couldn't understand why it worked so well. Yeah. 
Yes, this is a current. It's exactly the same weight as the Bashish was saying. This number of particles coming per unit time through per unit uh, side, through unit number of particle casting through unit side per unit time. It's a, it's classical uh, flux. Yes, sir. Well, if you if you decay faster, then you are weaker, more or less. So, so in this case, uh, range of inter range of correlation is probably more important. Range of correlations is more important. Okay. Okay. Good. So, what is interesting prediction here is that the splitting also affects dynamic significantly. You can actually change the situation from having the most optimal current for small repulsion to to have the most optimal current for attractions here. So. Um, so this this picture, this model, which is very simple from my point of view, I added a little bit one ingredient. It had so many sur surprises. It took us several years to figure out it. And I actually we wrote three papers, I think, and the first one definitely wrong. Second one corrected something, but I know that even in this one I wrong. So we, we actually were keep 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 improving ourselves because it was not trivial. Uh, okay. So this is my statement. Uh, so if you if you this parameter tate is less than 0 0.1, then the most optimal flux is for weak repulsion here. But this parameter close to one, the most optimal flux uh, shifts to to attractions here. And this close to one means that uh, interaction do not affect much uh, breaking of the bond, but attract, but they change significantly, making the bond, making this cluster. That's what physically it means. Okay, good. So let me remind you this picture that I showed you at the, uh, at the beginning here. So, so, so remember, this was the simulations here. We had this uh, not successful. This is absolutely not successful. This is partially successful here. Um, so ex this experimental is arguing that there is this weak attractions for kinase in here. But uh, this is a question which is related which what uh, Steve was asking. We don't know exactly what is the criteria for this transport. For transport, is it really trying to be optimizing fastest one? If this is if this is criteria that to be to move faster, but then that's probably not attractions. And I thought it's really repulsion is more reasonable because if you're going to weak repulsion, you can really accelerate by 20 percent, which is a big deal in in, in biological system where are quite crowded here. Um, so uh, um, so we essentially we think there are three possible options how I can. How, uh, how I can explain this for real biological system. So the option number one, so it is possible that kinesin is not optimized for maximal flux here. Um, so, so maybe it's uh, really optimized for something else here, and that's why this uh, weak attractive interaction is possible. Okay, so this is number one possibility here. Uh, so the possibility number two, maybe corresponding to this regime, maybe kinesin actually optimized for the maximal uh, flux for attractions, but that would mean that there is this Parameter theta is really close to one. I, I don't know. This parameter theta comes from microscopic arguments, and it's beyond of my level of uh, modeling here. Uh, but there is option number three, which I favor, but I don't know which one is right. But the option number three is that I believe that kinesin is optimized for maximal velocity because they probably repel weakly, weakly repel here. So, so what is interesting? The sign of interaction affect dramatically dynamics of motor proteins here. So, uh, the, and before I will go to small uh, other topic, this is what I think I speculate is that this adds additional level of regulation. Instead of doing classical biochemical regulation, you can regulate slightly this interaction, the sign of interaction, changing from a slight attraction to slight repulsion, and you can change dynamics dramatically. If you can believe my model, which is a cartoon, remember, of real life, but still, it has some interesting things. So, maybe it's additional level of uh, regulation, yes. Right, so the, the one the one experience was the clusters were without ATP. So there was essentially equilibrium kind of measurements. It's all only binding and binding. The, the dynamic experiments were beautiful, but essentially no numbers. Beautiful movies and uh, like they see there is a, the, was not enough to do something uh, more quantitative. I, uh, maybe I don't know the whole literature, as you know literature, Uh, you still might get clustering because you essentially you push away each other, right? If you push away, you can uh, you still might cluster. You see, if you see if if you know you come, let's say you come to cinema, right? It's not in America. Suppose that everything is is occupied, right? 
but you have to sit in. You sit on somebody else, right? I mean, you sit together. So that's kind of, it will lead to clustering. Right, right. If density is large and the limited number of spaces, you will actually occupy the same space. As, as space. That's what, uh, because these measurements were done uh, with fluorescence. It was not a resolution, right? I don't know exactly do they sit next to each other or on, on a parallel protofilament, so. I agree with you, I agree with you, but I am arguing that repulsion can, at some limit, produce similar picture. Yes. We, we, with Arvind, we're doing this, and the interesting results, we, it's not finished yet, I will talk to you later. There are some interesting results, but um, I, I will probably not talk right now, okay? So, now, one small thing is, uh, the things which I always concern when I look at these mathematical models is, I'm concerned that we always assume, or almost always assume, that systems are in stationary state. We always assume that motors go immediately to stationary states and do this. That's exactly what we do also in Monte Carlo simulation. We like throw away the first steps or some fraction of steps just to, to make sure that we're in stationary state. That's probably a reasonable thing here, but nobody knows exactly a biological system really at stationary state. Here. So what we wanted to do with this simple model, we wanted to test how long does it take, if I do some perturbation, how long does it take to come back to stationary state? So what I told you before, everything was stationary state results. I hope it's clear. And everything with Debashi thing was also stationary state results. The question is, if I do some uh, perturbation, how long does it take to return to stationary state? And the way to do this, we, we did the following thing. So, so this, this is a mu complex multi-particle system. It's very difficult to do it. But fortunately, because the system is one-dimensional, instead of looking for all uh, particles, we can look at a borderline between different domains here. So imagine there is no stationary state yet, but the, um, the, the right boundary would want to have high density phase and the left boundary want to do LD phase. And the region between these two domains is, call, uh, is called the domain wall. And depending on parameters, the domain wall will move and eventually in stationary state it will go to this border or to this border or, or, or when it will be phase, uh, phase transition, it will be wandering like this. So, so essentially, instead of looking at many particles, you can look at one effective particle, the main wall, and the motion of this domain wall can tell you how long does it take, the mobility of this special object will tell you how long does it take to go to stationary state. We can calculate this velocity of this object domain wall, we can calculate diffusion constant of this domain wall, and we can argue that this relaxation time to stationary state is inversely proportional to diffusion. In other words, if the domain wall is very mobile, you could probably reach uh, the end, which uh, the border, which is a stationary state faster. If it's very slow, you probably will do it longer. So this is the arguments. We can calculate everything analytically here, and this is this essentially uh, quantity which is proportional time to relaxation to stationary state as a function of interactions. And we did also a lot of simulations here. Um, so what we found is that actually for repulsions, motors relax faster. So I'm now almost convinced that these kinesins are really weakly repel each other because there is a lot of advantages in this. They, they, they go back to, to stationary state faster. If you go to attractions, it's really slow, longer. And you know, we understand why physically, because these clusters, to break these clusters take some time. So, and, and our simulations qu qu qualitatively support these things here. So, um, so this is again the question that I already asked. So what is better for motor proteins? Uh, what is better for transport, which is supported by motor proteins here? So I think it's my speculation, which I may be totally wrong. I think it's better if transport is faster and, and, and repulsions, at least in this case, really give this condition. But it's also better to be robust. In other words, uh, what is good about stationary state that uh, behavior is repeatable. If when I'm in transient region, behavior is not repeatable. I could be d uh, random. So, I believe that these um, weak repulsions actually satisfy both conditions. My transport is faster, and simultaneously I can go quickly to stationary state. So th that could be, and again, and this could be the reason for additional regulation by logical system, just regulated a little bit of uh, interaction between two motors, which might help. This might be also the reason for this dynectin in all of these uh, proteins which act on dynein, maybe. But again, it's a speculation. Um, and when you do, when you write grants, you write, you write a lot of the speculation, otherwise you will not get the money. Um, good, so essentially I finished. Uh, so we, um, so we, we thought about interactions between motor proteins and we developed, I know, a very primitive 
a naive way of taking into account some of these interactions using these multi-particle non-equilibrium systems here. So essentially, we investigated this totally symmetric system with interactions. But again, what differs from what was done before, these interactions were taken in a thermodynamically consistent way. In other way, this is a way I could explain bio biochemist what I'm doing. This is like making bond or breaking bond. All the rates are written in a thermodynamically consistent way here. Um, and I, we argue that these interactions induce correlation. But what is interesting, the sign of interactions has a dramatic role here, which is what surprised, as I said. So the co correlations are weaker and much short range for repulsions, but they're much stronger, just not much, just stronger and more long range for attractions. And it has a dramatic effect on dynamics here. We also argue that the symmetry of interaction, in other words, the state uh, between what also important affects dynamics here. Um, we also argue that this relaxation to stationary state is faster for repulsive things here, and it's, it's longer for, for attractive things here. And we, we made some speculations how it might be important for motor proteins. And again, I'm reminding you what I told you at the beginning. It's a cartoon, very naive, very primitive. I'm pretty sure I missed a lot of things here, but I hope that I captured something which might be important for biological systems here. Okay, good. And as I said, I intend to sell you more because in America you have to sell. Um, so in principle, this, you can extend this model easily in many directions and it's still analytical. And it's still the, the reason why it's convenient to have analytical theory, even if it's approximate one, because you can understand the physics of it. You can see the way, the reason we, we were able to see this thing because it was analytical. Just simulation is not enough to, to explain these things here. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, so some of this funding and uh, some of the publications. There is one more paper I forgot to mention. Yeah, and I also want to thank Arvind Kumar Gupta because uh, I never met him, but our email discussion actually stimulated a lot of thinking, and I learned a lot from this. Uh, thing. And thank you for your attention. Yes. Asymptote. Uh, yeah, the blue curve. Yeah. The blue curve is. Theta equal, theta equal one. This is some limiting cases which, for mathematical completeness, I put them here. But this would correspond to the case when transition state exactly on a, on a, when you break the bond. And if you if you think that there is a real transition state between making and breaking the bond, then transition state on on a, a state when it's together. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you have sort of? physical interpretation of why sometimes attraction would give a higher rate? Uh, yes, it, it, in this case it's uh, because essentially you, uh, br because in this special case theta equal one, breaking is still fast. So in all other cases when theta is not one, breaking of the cluster is slow if you go to infinite energy limit. But in this one special case, it's mathematical uh, simplification, the breaking is not, and that's the reason I think. But even, well, okay, the red curve is very close. Yes, it's very close because you really need to, but it's eventually go to, to zero. In only one case, it's not going to zero. Often with motors inside cells, they seem to cluster. So, and that seems to be a very important way in which processivity is maintained. How does that fit with your model? That's where exactly you what function? I'm saying. I'm saying the reason they cluster sometimes, because it might, might help them, to move faster and to to go back to... But to, you're talking about repulsion here if they are too close together, right? Yeah, I, I think that's... that's imp I think they all of the cluster together, it's a repulsion. The repulsions which might help them to move faster and to go back to... The clustering is an independent mechanism and when they start walking, they repel. Right, for example, as I mentioned, it'll be dynein. You have, a, you have dyna, dynactin... Again, I'm, I'm speculating, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. But you can come out with a ways of making the cluster, and they still should be rep could be repulsive, and it might help. But again, I might be wrong. In, in this model, it's a cartoon. It's nearest neighbors, just next when they sit next to each other. Okay. So, since you mentioned this this decoration experiment, where you clearly could see mm -hmm. clustering, which indicates attraction. I, I would still believe this indicates attraction. So my, my interpretation would be that maybe the interaction depends on the Conditions chemical cycle and that maybe these 
non-hydrolyzing kinesins attract, but when they start to move, you have other things. Right. Excellent. Yes. So I, is that a direction you're I, thinking I, I, in? I agree. So, so Stefan is saying that it is possible this experiments were done without ATP, essentially in a kind of artificial non-cellular environment. And I believe that in real systems with the ATP with all the biochemical machinery, it's probably weak repulsion. So I, I totally, this is what essentially you're saying, that's what might happen. Well, I, I was also thinking that maybe it's not so much the conditions, but the fact that in, without ATP, they are trapped in some state in which they yes. might yes. attract yes. each yes. other, but yes. when they walk, they go through a cycle exactly. and they exactly. may be in this state only for a very short period of time. I agree with you. And so repulsion that happens in other parts I agree of the with cycle. You. I agree. I fully agree with you. So you would imagine that without ATP, interaction with micro is relatively weak and there is a kind of attraction, but then ATP comes, you come closer. If you come closer to microtubule and your neighbor closer, you really do like this, we don't like each other. So yeah, for yeah. Example. I fully agree with this. Yeah, that's a possibility. Uh, huh? I actually vote for this repulsion for the following reason. One is that, uh, you know, there's basically entropic repulsion, which will manifest as effective repulsion. The second thing is that, you know, th this repulsion will probably split them in a way, creating some gaps. So that way they can get space to move. On the other hand, if it is attractive, they cluster. Right. Those which are inside the cluster, mm -hmm. they have somebody sitting in front, they find it more difficult to move. So the repulsion may be a way right. actually of opening up gaps, which will sort of speed them up. Right. For example, you mentioned this uh, um, uh, re recovery of transcription by replication, right? Things. I think a recovery happens if there is a repulsion, it could be happen more effectively. So in your in your model you have uh, you have stalled uh, uh, ribosome right and second comes to to help it right you assume there is no interaction just hardcore exclusion right but but the imagine situation if there is a positive attraction it will be not good but if it will be repulsion it actually can uh, move it quickly and even weak repulsion is enough to move it much faster. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want you showed a second set of experiments which showed uh, repulsion. Were those with ATP, ATP or uh, those were? Yeah, it was with ATP. So okay, let me go back. Essentially, maybe I didn't explain experiments well. Uh, again, uh, so with with ATP, but they also had some mutated particles, mutated kinesin, which cannot move but can bind. So so they were they created obstacles by another kinesins, which are very close. I can go. Uh, far away. Uh, where did I go? Yeah, so, okay. So, yes, so essentially they created obstacles by, so another kind is mutated, can bind to microtubule but cannot move. And then they have this normal kinesin which move. Okay. They move, 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 and if it would be attraction, they would really stick to this block. But they actually see the significant fraction actually went away. Based on these, mm -hmm. without any numbers, I think mm -hmm. that's probably repulsion. And just one more thing I wanted to do the dynamic, the update schemes matter in your conclusions? Uh, probably not. Okay. Probably not. So physics is pro probably not, but again, I don't know. When I started this model, I was not expecting so many surprises. I thought it's extremely simple generalization of totally symmetric, which we know well, and there is a lot of surprises, as you can see, right? I didn't expect that the, the, the sign of interaction uh, give different dynamics. I didn't expect that splitting will give a dynamic. So there is a, who knows, maybe. Right. With uh, only random sequential, right. then mean field is exact. But if you have uh, uh, parallel updating, then of course there are correlation, but two cluster becomes exact. So uh, updating scheme may in, you know, include some, uh, Additional correlations. That's right. Because you introduce some effective attractions or something, right? Uh, in the effective correlations, they introduce additional. So correlations. Th there are certain states which actually are ruled out in one case and not ruled out in the other. So depending on updating scheme, it happens in the ordinary tasset. But in this case, it is much more subtle. So I don't know, but I would believe that there may be effect of. I agree. I totally agree with you. Yeah, I'm just, um, sure. another clustering mechanism might be just a dispersion in the speeds at which the motors move. Uh, so the slow ones sort of, I mean, it's sort of a related to this experiment, right. I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to be all inclusive, you know. I am, I'm not ruling out attractions. I'm just saying, I'm saying the interactions are here. I feel that it's repulsions, I argued why, and the 
but it's still possible that it's attractions and uh, I'm all inclusive. <laughs> Like five star hotel. Anyway, thank you.